Okay, so I have all the components here in PhotoP of my digital inking. All I have to do now is erase out where the overlap is between my straight handle and my wrap, right? So I used a lot of compositing tools, rotating, warping to get everything in place. So what's a, a technique I can use being that all of these are very contained shapes to erase inside of them perfectly. Well, I can just go to the black line art and I can click on the magic wand and click on contiguous, right? And then I can simply use the magic wand and select inside, holding down shift, all three. I don't know if you can see the little dancing ants there. Come on. So I've made that selection. Now I can move that selection to this layer and then delete. Oh, still have a feather on. I want to turn that off. Let's try it again without the feather. Yeah. Black line art, magic wand, no feather, contiguous, hold down shift, get the empty space inside each of those, and then delete that away from this layer. Just like that. And it got a little messy. That's just the anti-alias and the slight grays and the magic wand not selecting anything that wasn't solid. And why are those little grays there? Well, because I warped them a little bit, right? So this is the importance of getting clean black line art within reason. So just like if it were a, um, a vector, like our vector logo, checking the edges. Because when it's pixel based, all of that matters. Just as much as if it is a vector shape, vector path. Okay. Looks pretty good, pretty clean. That's what I want to work with. So I have finished off the line art. What do I need to do? I need to combine that handle layer with my other black art line layer. It's very important that we keep them all contained. So I'm going to move my black art line layer on top so I keep that name. It will always keep the name of the layer that's on top. Hold down shift, select both of them then say layer merge layers. So if you're inking in more than one layer, you want to combine them all, right? I'm going to give that layer a color. Oh, well, it's not Photoshop. I can't give it a color. But very important that I label it so I know that that's the one that gives me my line art, right? Now I can keep my sketch there. But I'm going to change layer one now. Layer one was filled with white, but only 50%. Now I'm going to unlock it, and I'm going to fill it with 100% white. I think because I set it up as a layer property to only be 50%, I'm just going to create a new layer and then say edit fill 100% white. Good. So that should completely hide my sketch. But it's helpful to have my sketch 
you know, just in the in the layers all in one document. So this is my clean line art on white. And you want to make sure once it's all combined that it's perfectly black. If you're at all unsure, double click on it, go to color overlay, right? Make sure it's on normal mode at 100%. Pick the black that's in the very bottom left corner. The hex is 0000. zero, 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 zero. Say OK. OK. And then, right, everything will be the same solid black. And then how do we get rid of the layer style but put it into the, the pixels? We, we right click on it and we say rasterize layer style. So now we have finished our line art. It is finished. We are going to lock it with the padlock. And we're going to create a blank white. And that blank white layer, we're also going to lock. And now the coloring is going to happen. And the coloring is going to happen in between the blank white layer and the black line art. So think of it like a sandwich with a white piece of Wonder Bread on the bottom, that's blank white, and a dark piece of wheat bread, maybe rye bread on the top, that's your black line art. We're gonna make the most basic sandwich. So this is the most basic digital coloring sandwich white on the bottom, one layer of color in between, black line art on top. Now, how does that work? I go to my black line art layer, I use my magic wand with contiguous. I'm gonna turn off anti-alias and see if that gives me a cleaner result. And I'm gonna click on some area that's contained and open, or contained, not open. So like the blade of the sword. Now, even though that layer is locked, it will still select that shape for me. Then I move that selection to the flat color layer. And then I'm going to double click on my foreground color. And I can just choose a layer. So what kind of sandwich do we like? Maybe a grilled cheese, right? So I'm gonna find like kind of a, a Velveeta color an American cheese sandwich. So you know how American cheese is really saturated looking, really intense looking, not very natural. The problem with choosing your colors through the color picker is very often they become, they can look pretty unnatural. And then I'm going to use the paint bucket tool, which is right underneath the eraser. I'm just going to drop it in. And it's going to fill that flat color shape. Then I can hit a Control D to deselect. And sure enough, I have color behind my line art. It's color similar to Charlie Brown's yellow shirt, though he's not showing it here. Now, in order to get more interesting color, I want to find examples, right? Because just choosing them from the millions of color options here, using the spectrum slider and then using this slider, the most saturated being the upper right hand corner, uh, the darkest being the lower, lower right hand, and then the least saturated being on the left edge. So though I can find like good, let's say metal colors here, kind of the cold steel, and then I can drop it in. It's better to find inspiration. So I'm going to go and search uh, traditional tattoos and so find some what's called flash art. You know, th this is the spot illustration that two tattoo artists do that their customers can choose from. And I like tattoos from the 30s and 40s. And then there are some contemporary practitioners that are really, really good. Then I'm gonna move those into my digital seven folder as color inspiration, right? And tattoo artists now will often do their flash art digitally using the same skills that we're learning with this project.
and you can see the skull with the uh, the knife through it is a traditional tattoo theme. So how can we use these color exemplars now to choose colors within Photopea or Photoshop because they work the same way? What I'm going to do is open them. So let me open this one. So I'm going to go to File in Photopea, Open. It's a new project. It will open up in a new tab, right? Then I want to be able to switch between. I wish I could kind of float them on next to each other. And you used to be able to do that in PhotoP. But it doesn't look like they make that easy anymore because that can be problematic. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of using the color selector here for the blade, I'm going to find the local color of the blade that I'm inspired by, right? So the local color is just the flat color it would be. Like Charlie Brown, the local color of his jacket is red. But I can't take that exact red. But if I open it in PhotoP, I can use the, the eyedropper tool and click right on the color I want. And you see how it will bring that color in And then I can move that to another layer or to another file. So I'm going to steal that blue that's on the blade. And then I'm going to use my paint bucket to paint that in. And then everything that's the local color for the blade, I'm going to use the magic wand, select it, and fill that color in. Even the eye socket, because that has the blade running through it. Then I go back to my flat color layer and I drop it in with the paint bucket. And remember, this is not on your line art layer. You've locked your line art layer. This is behind it. And I hit uh, Control D or Command D to deselect. Right? And now let's pick another flat color. So for the uh, cross guard, use the eyedropper tool, click on that gold, go back to my spot illustration. Click on the magic wand, go to my black line art layer, because it's nicely contained, right? But I can hold down shift and use that for both the pommel and the cross guard. And then go to the flat color and then drop it in. And then notice where my shapes are contained, it won't enter in, but where they're open, it will flood it. Right, so that's why it's helpful to have fully um, flooded or, or fully contained shapes. Now let's see if I use the magic wand and click on anti-alias, because you see how I'm getting pretty hard pixel edges around my black line art. So what if I select it? With anti-alias, let's see if that makes a difference. Let's pick another color using the dropper tool. I'm liking this kind of reddish brown. Drop it in. So it's about.